Hey, this is George Manley, the narrator from Gotchamon, and Charlie's over here. He's going to ask me some questions. What's <laughs> up, Uh, Gotchamon's a one of a kind. I mean, it's obviously Sandy Frank saw something, you know, bringing it over to the United States as Battle of the Planets the first time. There were dozens, if not hundreds, of series he could have chosen, Tiger, uh, that <laughs> he might have uh, brought over, but um, uh, Gotchamon had a sustainable plot over a long enough period of time that. You know, he was really able to make a, a good series out of it and get that initial market penetration to turn on guys like me who were like almost single-digit midgets when uh, they brought it over uh, to get influenced into getting hooked on anime and, you know, ever since. Uh, one, catch up on the classic to uh, see it as it was, as it was intended to be. Remastered visually, I've I've seen the DVDs. They're good stuff, man. Um, you know, and to acquaint themselves with the original story, because right now the only way you can find out about it is by going to the websites. But you know, that this version is definitive, and uh, we've had some real great fun with it too. For one thing, working on Gatchaman is fun. Uh, being the narrator, I mean. You're, you're, you're dressing things up quite a bit. Uh, you're using, a, I want to say, a dramatic device that hasn't been used in animation in a long time that's similar to how radio plays were done. And I know some people have said that it's laziness on the part of the animator that they wrote in stuff for the narrator when they didn't want to animate. But, you know, I've seen things like fish moving and mountains moving. Just not a whole lot in the way of lips. <laughs> but uh, Gatchaman, for one thing, it's it, it was also groundbreaking at its time. It, it's the first in a series of shows. It's no longer an archetype for what people call the Sentai-type show, but it's definitely the prototype where you have the team together and everybody's in the colorful costumes and there's the impossible attacks that you wouldn't have an army anywhere try, like everyone stands on their shoulders and try and makes a whirlwind, okay? That's, you know, so there's fun stuff in there that as long as you're in that world, it's all good. You know, Superman has x-ray vision, Batman has gadgets that work all the time, and the Science Ninja team will always have the tornado fighter, so that's all good. The fact that we uh, went out of our way to, uh, you know, flavor it with the 70s references, I think was important to a degree because watching the original show, if you just tried for a straight cultural translation, it would have been dry. It would have been dry. And the thing is, Gatchaman is loved in the forms that it's been brought over in because people have known to culturally translate. Uh, probably the biggest criticism I hear of dubbing anime all the time is that it's not close enough to translation. Well, words are only part of the tools that are used when you act. You also have to, you have facial expressions. Granted, that's an actor tool that's left up to the animation, but there's also the way words are said, the way words are combined. So sometimes to tell the same story in a cultural t context, and I stumbled there, but that's all right. To tell the same story in cultural context, you have to add what makes the, wor the story work again. Right. Um, I uh, cut my teeth on Gantz last year. I'm writing another classic series, Macross, and I got my fingers in a pie that we uh, can't discuss as of this interview anyway, but you'll probably have it in your hot little hands by the time volume 16 comes out. I suppose, you know, I, I don't want to go with a cliche answer and say keeping it fresh because Tatsunoko already surmounted that challenge. 
And you see the fact that there's actually two other Gachamon series out there. They kept on going. So, um, so the real challenge is always in terms of keeping that fresh energy going. And one of the things I think that helps being here at ADV, we work on other series. So actually, it's not like you do Gachamon and nothing else because you come back and you're like, yeah, I'm back on Gachamon. I'm in my happy place. So um, I don't know if that really is a challenge. I, I'm not answering your question very well, am I? That's but because uh, ju just when you think maybe in some dark corner of your mind, it's like, okay, can, can I bring the fresh this time? And usually you end up working like on the previous week on some dark and depressing, the world's going to end type of series, or well, like me, I play the kind of characters who get shot up all the time, and then I come back and work on Gachamon, and it's like, Wee -hee -hee. so I think maybe the challenge is to go do those other shows after I have such a great time. Seeing Gachamon on the big screen, especially with the folks in Austin, Texas. Got to throw up the devil horns for the folks in Austin. Go UT. And just for the crazy people. Um, seeing, all the, seeing all those folks react to Gachamon like that after all these years was immensely gratifying. The fact that the fun we had recording translated into the fun they had watching the show. You know this is happening happening, just can't get my words out right, happening in living rooms where people are watching Gachamon. Don't watch this show alone. You, this is meant for you to make popcorn and get drinks and bring friends over. You will laugh and you will enjoy yourself because we did over at the Alamo. It was great. You know, Gachamon's your anime party show. Murder music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love not only uh, narrating murder music, but I got a chance to be a musician. And yeah, obviously the fact that uh, we had Kira create an original song for murder music, but uh, for, for fun, that was obviously the one. Um, I don't remember the exact name of it, but obviously the uh, farewell to Red Impulse right in the middle of the series. Um, 70s American animation didn't have that. So that, that's another thing you get with Gachamon that you don't get. I mean, we're used to seeing an anime now. And probably there's anime fans, by and large, who are picking this up. But that's one of the reasons why we like anime is because these sacrifices are made and your heartstrings get pulled on. You know, even dudes walking around with lowercase r on his forehead. It didn't matter because Red Impulse was so cool. You didn't need an uppercase r with trim on it. I would have to say out of them, you'd be surprised. Um, but out of the Science Ninja team, uh, Jinpei. Jinpei, he has a, he has a strange way of somehow getting involved in a story that gets the other four members of the team thinking about him. All those other kids, 17, 18, 19, 16, whatever, in the other episodes, they tend to infight a little bit. I'm right, no, I'm right, no, I'm going off in this direction, bah, 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 Jinpei's in trouble. <gasps> we gotta go take care of little brother, man! You know, so Jinpei is like a karmic reset for the other four members of the team. If Jinpei was 18 like everybody else, there wouldn't be that dynamic in the team. Plus, uh, you know, Lucy Christian just brings him to life like you wouldn't believe. You know, she's doing a bang-up job with Jinpei. I would have to say... Uh, just because it sounds so cool and is kind of microcosmic for everything we're doing here, <laughs> I gotta go back to the sonic mecca from murder music. This thing that looks like this cross between an ocarina and a pipe organ and uh, 
Y-wing fighter from Star Wars with the big pipes coming out and blaring the Janis Joplin noise all over the place. That's <laughs> that is one bad machine, let me tell you. What advice do I have for the Science Ninja team in future episodes? Yes, they are. They are in a bad place. Um, hmm. Galactor, in spite of all the technology they have, are counter punchers. Go after them. Punch them in the lip. Twice. I know, I know man. You, just, you got the technology working on your side, and you're not afraid to go smack him in the mouth first. It's been 95 episodes. Go out there and, you know, whack old Berg Katze in the head, all right? You need advice from me? You've been doing this for over two years now. Come on. <laughs> well, that's funny, because this voice actually makes me a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I'm also uh, ring announcing for the uh, Texas Wrestling Entertainment uh, Association in uh, San Antonio. Uh, I write for ADV. I already mentioned that before. Um, but I'm one of the lucky few who's found a way to keep the roof over my head entertaining people. I've got my finger in the pie with some web cartoons, and I'm always auditioning for things. So I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty lucky, all things considered. Keep watching Gachamon. Keep watching anime. It's good for you. Trust me, you don't want to go back to the world of side-scrolling animation. You want bright, bright colors, seriously. Gachamon is the stuff you want more. I'm overselling here, but seriously, it's been great working on this series. It's been great working with Charlie on this series. It's been great working with the other great actors on this series. We all feel blessed and fortunate to be a part of it. And I know from everything I've heard from the fans so far that you're enjoying it. Thank you.